Hello Finksters. So today we're going to be working with time zones in Python and we'll be using the Python date time module and the date util package. So the topics we're going to cover in this video, we'll revisit the date time module in Python. We did this in a previous article and video, um, but this will be a little refresher. And if you haven't used the date time module before, please don't worry, it's easy to follow along. We'll introduce the third party date util package and we'll discuss the concept of naive and aware date time instances and which one to use. We'll also introduce a few new methods for you. Two of them are date time methods, uh, date time now and the end one there, string format time, both belong to the date time module and the date time class. And the other four that you see there belong to the date util package and the TZ class. And so you've got local UTC name and offset. So we'll introduce those and discuss exactly what they do. Finally, we'll generate some time zone aware dates and times for coordinated universal time and local times. And finally, we'll output a chosen list of world cities showing current times relative to our local time. So the Python date time module and third party date utils package, let's just get into the date time class first, just as a refresher. It uses the Gregorian calendar and it takes the attributes year, month, day. And it assumes that a day consists of 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. And you'll see that use when we use some of the time offset in some of the coding shortly. And the date time class accepts attributes of hour, minute, second, microsecond, and it has some time zone information in there also, which is very important for what we're about to do. And the date util package is simply a package of really useful classes that add power and utility to the standard date time module in Python. And you'll see us working with them hand in hand, and they provide a rather nice um, response to our problem. So we'll use a few methods, as I said, and let's just go through those quickly. So the date time now method returns the current date and time of the computer system during the execution of the now statement. And then we have TZ local, which comes from the date util package, and that actually extracts information from the time zone information, which is contained in the date time instance. We've got the UTC method, which obviously returns an aware date time instance in coordinated universal time. And we have the name, which extracts the time zone name from the date time instance. So that uh, time zone information that we spoke about earlier, if there is a name there, it will extract it. Time zone offset allows us to put in two attributes, a time zone name and it's offset from UTC in seconds. And you'll see us using this when we do some of the world cities at the end of the coding session and then string format time. And this is a useful one which allows us to format the output of the date time instance into a human friendly form from codes that we enter. So let's go and do some coding. So we'll start with importing the date time class so from date time, we're going to import everything. In fact, we'll import date time, time and calendar for this one, but we will only be using the date time class in this particular sheet and in all of this code. We will also import the date util package, but specifically the TZ class and we'll, we'll import all the methods in that class. So now we talked about the daytime now class and the daytime now class simply returns the time of your computer as it is now. And I'll do that and we'll see down the bottom here, we've returned a date of 15th of the 5th, 2021 
at 16.51 in the afternoon and seconds and milliseconds. Now this is what's termed a naive date time. There is no time zone information in this. This is not relative to anything in the world. It's simply a time that comes from your computer and if I transport this time to anywhere else in the world, it means nothing. So it's naive, it's not that useful for any type of comparison to other what are called aware date time instances. So that's a naive. Now let's go and have a look at an aware date time instance and you'll see the difference in terms of the time zone information that comes back to us. And there you see obviously the same date, the same time, but now what we've got is we've got some time zone information at the back end here. And because we've used up here the method that we discussed earlier, which is date time now, and then we've passed it TZUTC from the date utils package, that will work out the UTC time from your computer system time um, and the time zone information that's inherent in that. So we now have an aware date time instance which has been returned to us. So that is the time at UTC and you'll notice that my computer time is 1653 and UTC time is 1553 because I'm in London and London is currently one hour ahead of UTC due to summer time. So let's go and have a look at another aware date time instance. And this one uses the TZ local. So this will once again return my current time in London, but it will now have time zone information. It will be time zone aware. And let's just do that now. And there you see the original naive one. You see the UTC, which is plus zero hours, and you can see the GMT summertime time, which is one hour ahead of UTC. So we're now starting to generate aware times using these TZUTC and TZ local methods from the date util package. And we spoke about TZ name, which we're about to use here. TZ name looks at the time zone information that's inherent in a aware date time instance and it will retrieve that time zone name. So let's just do that for local time. And there you can see it simply returns the name, which is Greenwich Mean Time, Daylight Time. And there you see TZ local and then the dot TZ name syntax, which will give us that response. And that's fine for local and it's fine for UTC, but what about if you're somewhere else in the world? So let's just have a look at one more method that we introduced, which is the time zone offset. Now time zone offset, if you remember, allows us to pass the time zone name and the offset in seconds from UTC. So the time zone name I've used here JST for Japan Standard Time um, and this is for Tokyo. Now bear in mind that this I could enter anything. I could enter Finks Dakota's Rock um, which is a really accelerated time. Um, but so it's, it's, it's not something that's pulling from anywhere other than the string entry that you make. This time you need to calculate because we know that Tokyo is nine hours ahead. You need to calculate that nine hours, nine hours times 60 times 60 to give you 32,400 seconds. And it's ahead, we know it's ahead because it's east of us and therefore it's a positive number. If it were west of UTC, we would have to put a minus sign in front of that and you'll see us do that shortly. So let's have a look at this now. We'll run this. We'll run it to see 
what we get returned from the TZ offset, and then we'll run it to extract the name, as we did previously, TZ name, which should return that string JST. So let's run that and see what happens. And down the bottom here, you now see that in Tokyo, whereas in, in London, it's currently 1657 on the 15th of the 5th, in Tokyo, it's 57 minutes past midnight, so it's uh, early in the morning, and it's the 16th of the 5th. So it's a Saturday here today, and it's Sunday morning in Tokyo. It gives you the Tokyo time, and it gives you the time zone offset from UTC at the end. So we've generated a, an aware date time instance for Tokyo in Japan, and then the last one using the TZ name, as we applied it up here, we have actually extracted that JST, which was the string that we entered in there. All right, so that's run through the methods we're going to use. So let's take a step forward and I will clear that. So what we've done here now is we've from the date time module, we've imported the date time class and I've just put an alias of DT because we're going to be typing that out a lot and I'm lazy. And from dateutil.tz class, we'll import all the methods. Now, I want to introduce a new method here and we spoke about it earlier, which is string format time. And string format time will take a date time instance and then depending on the codes that you use to format it will output that format. So you'll see I've used here a percent capital A, which will return the day, the named day, Saturday in this case, percent D, small d, which will return the numerical day, which is the 15th, percent small b, which will return the month, and that's month as in May, not five, and percent capital Y, which of course will return the year, and then hours and months, and then I've just put the HRS at the end so that it scans. So string format time will take the date time instance that we've been returning previously, which is not that readable, and makes it something a lot more readable. And then at the end, I've just put in the time zone name. So what I've done up here is I've taken UTC time zone name and passed it to variable UTC, and I've called that down here. So it will return the time zone name at the end of this formatted string. And of course here I've just uh, created a date time instance, passed it to base, and then initiated base dot string format time in the format that I wish to see. And otherwise I've just done some formatting here so that it looks nice when we print it out. Now I've done the same for London local as well. So let's run that and see what that looks like. So there you have down the bottom, UTC, Saturday 15th of May 2021, 1600 hours UTC, and London, Saturday 15th of May 2021, 1700 hours GMT Daylight Time. So I think you'll agree, much more readable than the previous iteration. If we just go back to that for a second and uh, run that, it's just not so user friendly. So. I quite like that string format time. It's a very powerful way of extracting whatever you wish from the date time instance. Now in the article, uh, the Risen article, I have given a link to a website and it's quite simple actually. It's string format time as printed there, .org. And in that web page, there are all the codes that you can apply to provide whatever format of that date time instance you wish. So go and have a look at that and a bit of a play. And just to remind you what that looks like again, there we have it down the bottom. 
All right, so now we've got UTC and local time and we've got it nicely formatted. So let's take the final step and do the list of cities around the world that I have interest in so that when I initiate that, it will tell me the time and day in all of those cities around the world relative to where I am right now. So let's go to the last step. So nothing's changed up the top. Date time import date time is DT, date util.tz, import all. And all I've done here is I've segmented things a little. So now we have UTC as our base time. I've done a east of UTC block of cities. And let me get rid of that so you can see a bit more. We have local time in London. We have Johannesburg time. Uh, we have Tokyo time and Kiribati. And then west of UTC, we have Washington DC, we have Panama, we have Rarotonga, and we have Niue. And you'll see with these west of UTC cities, the negative in front of the seconds. So, for instance, we know that Washington DC is four hours behind UTC, Panama is five hours behind, Rarotonga, ten and new A is 11. So we simply need to calculate 11 times 60 times 60 to get minus 39,600 seconds. If you need to know what these um, time zone names are, I strongly suggest World Clock, uh, which is really useful. Uh, world Date and Time, there's a number of them that you can go and find out all the information you ever need to know about time zones. So now if I print that, and we'll increase this so you can see it. So there you have the output, which is current time in UTC, Saturday 16.04, and then London 17.04, Johannesburg 18, Tokyo, we've gone into Sunday, the 16th and it's 1.04 in the morning, 16th of May in Kiribati, it's 6.04 in the morning, sun's just coming up. And then west of UTC in Washington, it's uh, only midday, 11 o'clock in Panama, 6 in the morning in Rarotonga and 5 in Niue. So there we've achieved what we originally set out to do using some very simple commands and methods from the date time, date time class and the date util tz class. So let's just go back to our slide pack. So in summary, we introduced the date time module in Python and the third party package date util. We learned about the date time dot date time class in Python and we learned about the TZ class in date utils and how well they work together. We also understand a little more about naive and aware date time instances with aware instances having time zone information. And if you're doing anything that may cross time zones, you need to be using aware date time instances. We introduced a range of methods and uh, there they are. And finally, we output a list of chosen cities with formatted dates and times and time zone names. So thank you very much for watching. I enjoyed taking you through that. I hope you got something from it and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.